Police say thanks to the surveillance system here in Times Square, they may now know who planted a bomb here in 2008. They're having trouble locating the suspect on the video and they're asking for the public's help. They are now offering a $65,000 reward for any tips which may lead to his whereabouts. Hoboken Councilman Tim Acapinti believes in paying it forward. After this city survived Sandy with the help of strangers, he set up a direct way for anyone, anywhere to help Oklahoma tornado victims. With the click of a button, you can locate a Walmart store, just like this one, in Moore, Oklahoma, and send supplies to victims left with nearly nothing. Whether it's texting, tweeting, or emailing, connecting on the commute home is about to get easier for nearly 120,000 NJ Transit riders. The Knicks cashed in on a new shooting guard in last night's NBA draft. Coaches are hoping Tim Hardaway Jr. can help Carmelo Anthony on the offense and bring a championship back here to New York. You have arrived. But where are we? Uh, seems a little brighter. Well, actually, the road sign is missing. Finding your way around Ridgewood isn't exactly easy these days. More than 75 street and traffic signs have gone missing from this New Jersey suburb in the last month, including this one at the intersection of Morningside and Glenwood Road. I certainly grieve for my, my fellow Ridgewood residents that this is going to be a problem. Village Supervisor Jim O'Connell says not only is this an inconvenience. There was a medical emergency. You have paramedic units that come from out of town. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of delay is it this street? Is it the next street? It's also dangerous. O'Connell says several stop signs have been swiped as well. Get a car coming up to a stop sign. They're not familiar with it. They might go right through it, cause an accident. O'Connell says each sign is $40, and he estimates the town will spend about $3,000 to replace them all. Money that's coming out of the taxpayers' pockets. And not everyone here is happy about it. I'd rather pay for something else than street signs again. The traffic signs and majority of the street signs are now back in place. All should be replaced by next week. Village police say there is an investigation underway, but that all signs point to this being a childish prank. I have no idea, you know, aside from a, a, a group of kids wanting to, uh, you know, uh, play a prank, why anyone else would do such a thing. In Ridgewood, New Jersey, I'm Julie Parisi. There we go. Jimmy Fernandez has lived here under the Bayonne Bridge for 19 years. He loves the view from his backyard, but it's this very scenery that could soon force him from his home. Was construction. They never was very careful about it. This time, debris is constantly flying from the bridge and right into his pool, where his grandchildren like to play. See? That's led from the bridge. Fernandez isn't the only one battling bridge problems. His neighbor, Josephine, was forced to have her pool replaced. How much was that? Over $6,000. For the people here on JFK Boulevard, the problems are just beginning. This project isn't slated to be finished until 2015, after crews finish raising this bridge 64 feet, so wider ships can pass through and deliver goods to nearby terminals. I'm assuming that if any of the other neighbors complain and do something, they will do the same thing. The Port Authority is leading this $1.3 billion project and has offered to accommodate these homeowners once construction picks up. Soon, there will be a crane in Jimmy's backyard, but he doesn't plan to go anywhere if he can help it. I think it's a progress to build a new bridge. But not in my backyard, you know what I mean? In Bayonne, I'm Julie Parisi. Um, Tom Jenkins will Jenkins. always opt for a city bike over a cab. I think New York should use less cars anyway and more bicycles. He lives here in the West Village, so he's grateful to have this bike share station nearby. And put them into all the five boroughs. Now they're only Manhattan and Brooklyn. But not everyone shares the same sentiment about the cycles. It ruins the cobblestone look. Um, they really need to pull some of them back. They're parked in too many, too many, too many streets. In fact, people here at 99 Bank Street are so upset about the bikes, they filed a lawsuit. For this location is too many bikes. Edward Zimbalotti is leading the building's fight against the city. The Homeowners Association feels New York planned the bike program poorly. It's basically a zoning problem. They cannot block an entrance to a building, which they were. Residents here filed a lawsuit against the city in May. Since then, four of these bikes have been removed and this rock has been put in its place. Zimbalati says they're not looking for all of these bikes to be taken away, they're just looking for a little compromise from the city. Just pare it down to more of a, uh, an appropriate size for this level of neighborhood. The city disagrees with the lawsuit, saying they picked the sites after extensive research. But before the city completely backpedals on the program in this neighborhood, riders are taking advantage while they can. I have my own bike and I keep it at home. This is a lot more convenient in some ways. Uh, if I'm just going one way, I can take a bike one way and leave it and take a bus back or a subway back. In the West Village, I'm Julie Parisi.